Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 26, 2022, uh, and I thought what I'd do is take a walk through the gardens, give you a bit of an update on things. Uh, Thea and I have both been pretty busy. I've been working in the in the forest, trying to do hoo culture pits, harvesting gravel, t building roads, that sort of thing, and doing repair work around here as well. Things that I'm just not going to bore you with. But uh, Thea's been organizing and working a lot in the greenhouse and keeping the plants watered and all. Uh, she's, we harvested the garlic and she just went up and got the shallots and hopefully there'll be a video coming about that as well. But uh, we've had quite a bit of heat and droughty, you know, it's you know dry, dry t times here. We have gotten a small amount of rain, which is really greatly appreciated. Uh, but that's where we are. We've both been uh, running around kind of crazy here and hopefully we'll do a video on some of our modified plans and this year is going to be one of those things where we're reassessing with the being retired, how much we want to do, what we want to do, how things are going. Sales haven't been good with, uh, with our plants. I anticipated this year that things would be getting better uh, as far as selling plants, the, all the, the uh, perennial berry bushes and that sort of thing. Uh, people are interested, but I think because of the, uh, the economy, uh, people just aren't going out and purchasing those. And uh, this is a time really to get uh, perennial plants in the ground so that you got berries and uh, fruit, fruit to be uh, harvesting for years to come. But anyways, here we are outside of the West Garden plot here. No big changes with what's going on with the gooseberries all along in here. Uh, Thea has, uh, I think she's just about finished harvesting all of the honeyberries. Uh, we, we, I, we love them in our oatmeal in the morning. Those plants look great. Uh, I don't know if we did put, uh, post a video on the uh, putting the cardboard around we're going to be doing more work here so it's sheet mulching uh, so this this area here there has been a look Thea has done some weeding she's been harvesting lots and lots of blueberry blueberries we got several uh, gallons of blueberries so far off of these plants uh, and we'll talk more about in a future video of what we're going to do with our blueberry plants here and all and some of our, our plants have changed. This area here, we're gonna to have to tarp the uh, thornless blackberry plants. These ones that deer haven't gotten to, so they're, they're starting to produce some berries over here. Uh, these are triple crown ones here. Let's see. There's some of the berries there. Not many berries up front because the, the darn deer have just chopped those right down to, to nothing. And that'll be one of the the things that we discuss in upcoming videos. Uh, blueberry plants, like I said, have been doing really well. Haven't done anything else with hardwood cuttings over here. The lupine, which are nitrogen fixers, are doing pretty well. The, uh, the uh, corkscrew or curly willows have really taken off. They're really doing very, very well. Uh, so that's part of our living fence material that we've got. The elderberry plant over here and our other elderberries, they took a sh took a, a bit of a shock when we did our uh, our living fence over there and we modified, removed the other fence over there. So we'll do an update on that in the future as well. We can see the flowers have, have uh, resolved and now berries are starting to be produced over here. And this is uh, the cardboard laid down for sheet mulching. Put it underneath the fence because we were getting bindweed working up in here. And there are other weeds that I've still got to get to as well. I'm trying to create somewhat of a balanced life for ourselves, but it's, we're still going full tilt boogie. I'm trying to get projects done around here. And my list of projects is, uh, is quite extensive for the property and for the house, because eventually I want to get to the house as well. And so I haven't spent any time in the gardens at all. Thea has been harvesting the broccoli uh, pretty much steadily. And, uh, and we've got quite a bit of the, the our broccoli uh, of florets are pretty small. They're not the great big crowns that you're used to seeing. Uh, and I think we're just about done with harvesting those. So these will be getting composted soon. I think our freezers are just about full of all the uh, kale. 
So I'll be composting this pretty soon as well. <laughs> the kale in here. Uh, the tomatoes aren't quite ripe yet, but they're doing extremely well. Uh, quite a bit, a few weeds in between the onion plants here, but much, most of it's purslane. Uh, in here there are other weeds as well, but the, uh, the bulbs are starting to develop there pretty well. Again, neither of us had the, have had the time to work in the gardens. These are the banana peppers. Uh, they're all doing pretty well. Again, I wish I had more time to come in here and do the weeding and all. Uh, but we still have, uh, the onions we don't have lots of, but we still have at least a year's supply of uh, tomatoes still in our freezers, uh, still at least one year with, uh, with peppers and uh, a couple years worth of kale as well. Uh, potatoes, uh, we got grasses in here as well. These are the blue flesh Irish type potatoes over in this bed. Haven't weeded at all. We did lay out, uh, Thea did lay out, spread some uh, chamomile, uh, Roman chamomile and some clover, some white clover seeds uh, in the path over here and over in the eastern garden bed as well. So overall, real happy we've gotten so much food out of these gardens. And again, uh, we'll be reducing the size of these gardens again next year. Uh, and taking and putting more of the plants that were uh, destined to be out in other areas like the blueberry patches that I was designing out back and the thornless blackberry plants that we've head up front for for years instead of going and doing extensive uh, fencing around those areas to keep the deer out I think what we're going to end up doing is uh, is uh, concentrating more on on uh, keeping them in a more uh, smaller area because we're able to get so much uh, fruit and vegetables from the uh, from the gardens and we just, it's more than what we can handle, actually. So these are the Scarlet Red Runner Beans. Uh, this is our only uh, hoop trellis for the Scarlet Red Runner Beans. We had two more last year. This will probably be plenty for, for us. There's lots of lambs quarter and all coming up and purslane down here and some grasses as well. Uh, the clover didn't really start to take off, but there are places where there's lots of, of the uh, Roman uh, chamomile uh, starting up. There's a small spot right there. I'm trying not to, to, to upset it. The grasses, I do want to get over here and try and pull before too long. Uh, the corn has been doing well. Uh, I probably won't plant the corn over here again because of the, sh the shade from the uh, locust tree here is causing some of the corn not to get enough sunshine and so it's smaller and the soybean are growing well uh, around and those were inoculated with the uh, with nitrogen fixing rhizobacterium and our kidney beans are doing pretty well there are a couple of the carrot seeds that did end up germinating in between down here uh, but the goal here is to try and get our Clover, and so there's some more of the chamomile there. You can see around the grass. So I do have this overhead watering uh, tripod thing here to go ahead and water this area at night, at, uh, in early in the morning rather. These are the jalapeno uh, pepper plants. They're they're developing pretty nicely. These are the russets here. Trying not to step too much. Uh, Thea did get. Uh, I ordered more of the uh, clover and uh, Thea spread it out just recently. I can't remember which day it was in all of these paths. So hopefully we'll be successful with some clover coming up in these paths. Uh, you know, the seed is so expensive right now. It's, it's kind of frustrating for gardeners. And I'm sure fertilizers are pretty darn expensive now as well for people who use fertilizers. Uh, 
So the uh, the black-eyed Susans and the uh, the, the uh, German chamomile are all doing very well along in here. And I can see there's quite a bit of the the Roman chamomile coming up in here. Just want to see that clover come up. And you can see the scarlet red runner beans in here. Just love all the beautiful flowers and the hummingbirds that so much enjoy uh, feeding on the nectar from these. The flowers over on this side aren't doing quite as well, but they are they are taking hold. Um, the sweet potatoes, as you can see, they're growing like crazy in here. Uh, there is uh, just a couple of the um, Pennsylvania smartweed, which is drawing the uh, the Japanese beetles. They are, I should have left a couple more in here because the, the Japanese beetles are hitting these ones somewhat. So those are our sweet potatoes. We uh, Potatoes and sweet potatoes and uh, our, all our greens and beans are like the big staples of our diets and all. Uh, these are the small little uh, tomatoes that we put, that were extras that we put in later on. Lots of weeds in here, unfortunately. Strawberry uh, plants are doing okay. The parsley over here is doing pretty well as well. We do have a couple of the banana peppers uh, that are doing okay over here. And all of these tomato plants are all the same. There are uh, determinate um, uh, San Marzano tomatoes. Uh, we're just gonna cover up this area except for the basil down here and the dill. Uh, these plants are doing quite well, but the rest, too many weeds in here. So we'll cover this up with some black plastic. I haven't done any of the weed whacking that I'd like to be able to get done in here. Uh, but the red onions, these are the extras that Thea put over in here. They're doing pretty well so far. Purslane in here isn't a big problem. That's actually okay. Uh, and again, more of the uh, San Marzano tomatoes over here. They'll be quite stunted. But uh, so far, so good. So all in all, uh, I'd say I'm content seeing that I haven't spent any time in the gardens other than to come through and do some mowing and taking the big weed whacker out here when I did. Didn't do any fine weed whacking. I haven't done any weeding in here. Uh, and that's a big part of really trying to stay on top of these gardens is keeping the weeds under control. The pests are under control. Uh, the water management system's working well. Our older weed mats in the central garden, uh, the, the little holes that were, were that were put in from the old rusty staples, the weeds have germinated through there and they're opening up those, those spots a little bit. So we'll have to see what we're gonna do about those for next year. And all. So there's quite a few things that we'll be modifying. Uh, we'll be reducing uh, the volume of the different uh, crop types that we have, the, the kale. We may actually cut back on tomatoes, even though they're, they're such a big part of our regular diet. And we'll probably alternate seasons, whether we're going to do sweet corn or not. Uh, we, don't, we don't eat a lot of corn. Uh, our potatoes and our beans and our uh, tomatoes uh, and our kales, those things we go through lots of. The berries from the various berry bushes around, including the honeyberries, the blueberries, and, and of course this year not as many blackberry plants. So that's where we're going to be modifying some of these garden bed areas, these garden plots, to get more of those perennial plants in here to protect them. And we'll be thinking about what we're going to be doing with the uh, fencing for these gardens as well. The cattle panels are doing really well, the ones we put around here. Eventually, I want to get to the point where, the, where we're using these large uh, kennel panels like this here because the deer still jump over uh, the fencing that's in the, the central garden. That's that premier one fencing, that white uh, electric fencing deer just pop right over that. So I guess that's about it for this garden update. Uh, I wish I had more valuable information to share with you about the gardens and all and I wish our gardens looked prettier and all. They're functional at this point. We've gotten quite a bit out of them. 
Uh, still more to come, uh, but we haven't been maintaining them like we'd like to. And so this is just one more thing that we need to uh, observe and assess and modify our plans for next season and the seasons after. So hopefully as we, as we sit down and discuss these things, we'll be sharing our thoughts and, and uh, future plans as well with you. So hope your gardens are doing well and that you're, that you're staying healthy and taking good care of yourselves. Uh, if you aren't gardening and you have the, uh, the desire to do so, now's the time to learn as much as you can do, even if it's just patio plants or, or whatever. Um, it's, uh, I anticipate uh, there'll be challenging times ahead uh, for food, for fuel, and I think rent prices are going to be going up as well, putting the pinch on uh, more of the consumers. Uh, so the more that we can produce, the less that we need to consume, and we can save some costs with that as well. But you have to balance that out with time as well. So if you have any comments uh, or suggestions, please leave them below. I hope you folks take good care of yourselves and stay healthy. Bye-bye now.